the Miami Dolphins are expected to be big players in free agency and offensive line as a position that many believe they will target. They don't need an overhaul. Fans of the Dolphins point out that Tua Tungavailoa can't be completely judged because of the horrendous offensive line he has played behind. To that, I completely agree. The Dolphins' line has been atrocious. But, there is always a, but. Miami fans have complained just as much about the coaching as the players that Miami has drafted. Let's consider the coaching staff and we will start with the oldest player on the Dolphins' offensive line. Greg Mance has six years of NFL experience but only one with the Dolphins in last year wasn't great for him. Jesse Davis has five years of experience and while we all can agree it is time to move on, consider this statistical marvel Jesse Davis 2017 to present. Positions right guard, right tackle, left tackle, left guard two head coaches, five offensive coordinators, six offensive line coaches. We can pretty much stop right here. The rest of the offensive line is younger and most have gone through some of the worst coaches in Dolphins history at the position. In fact, you could argue that many of them are not qualified to run the unit. Consider that Lemuel Jean-Pierre took a demotion this year to stay with the team after coaching offensive line last year. He will be an assistant this year. Why does that matter? Because even he said he needs to get better implying he wasn't ready. Matt Applebaum has an NFL resume and a college resume and is good at his job. He will have his work cut out for him but will he see the Dolphins' current roster as a problem or something that just needs to be coached? Miami is likely going to look for free agent offensive linemen but they could skip signing a center and leaving Dieter in place for one more year to see how he transitions. Robert Hunt is a guard that continues to improve and there is value in Solomon Kindley as a backup. Jesse Davis is the liability at left tackle but will the Dolphins give up on Austin Jackson and Liam Eichenberg after two seasons and one for Eichenberg? Not likely. This would imply that Miami may look for a left tackle and maybe some help at guard but I'm not sure they overhaul it yet and I am not sure that they need to. Not if Applebaum can mold them and develop them. The Miami Dolphins haven't done Tua Tungavailoa any favors and if your focus is solely on the offensive line, you would be wrong. There is so many things wrong with the Miami Dolphins offense but Tua Tungavailoa remains the bullseye on the dartboard. Will that change in 2022? Mike McDaniel believes there is untapped talent with Tua and he believes that offensive coordinator Frank Smith and quarterback coach Daryl Bevel can bring that out of him. McDaniel says publicly that he sees something in Tua Tungavailoa and that there is something there to work with but while fans and media criticize the young signal caller, there is far more going on that isn't controlled by Tungavailoa. Everything wrong with Miami offense existed when Ryan Fitzpatrick was the quarterback. It existed with Ryan Tanhill and probably even Chad Henney if we wanted to go back that far to really dive in and look knowing what we know today. Tunga Vailoa is not without his problems and he sure hasn't done himself many favors. From poor decision with the football to bad throws at bad times, and laying an egg in his biggest game of his career, against the Titans last season, didn't help. Here are some of the real reasons why Tua has struggled and what Mike McDaniel needs to change in his first year with the Dolphins. Why? because if he can't, Tua likely won't be around for the following season. No coaching support is a problem. Coaching has been a problem and that can't be denied when it comes to Tua Tungavailoa. Brian Flores or Chris Greer? Take your pick when you want to blame someone for the Deshaun Watson garbage. Flores wouldn't commit to Tua and Greer sidestep the questions. This wasn't something that was a simple topic leading up to the trade deadline. The Watson rumors began to circulate prior to the NFL draft last year. It ramped up again as training camp started and it only got worse as the trade deadline got closer. Miami's seven-game losing streak turned into a seven-game winning streak. Not coincidentally after the trade deadline passed and the talk of Tua being traded or bench died off. It wasn't just the negativity in the press surrounding the Watson trade rumors. Tua has been in the NFL now for two seasons. He has had some of the worst offensive coaching that the Dolphins have seen. Chan Gailey, Eric Studesville, and George Godsey, the two-headed, offensive coordinators' approach last year was a joke. Add in the quarterback coaching of Charlie Fry and of course the rumors of him calling plays as well. No matter what you think of Tua, you can't dismiss the problems with the coaching staff, including Brian Flores. Yes, the offensive line bad. The Miami Dolphins' offensive line has been cursed since Jonathan Martin stormed out of the team's dining room because Richie Incognito ate the last biscuit. Okay, that entire situation wasn't funny at the time but the offensive line has been horrible. Last year, the Dolphins line finished at or near the bottom in just about every statistical category that included run blocking, sacks,
pressures, and pass protection. Say what you will about the seven-game winning streak, the defense was really the force behind that elevation and while Tua was playing much better, the offensive line was not. It will be interesting to see if Mike McDaniel can fix this unit with new offensive line coach Matt Applebaum. On paper, he may be the best line coach Miami has had in a decade. Maybe, but on paper, he definitely is the best coach Miami has had in the last three years. There have been four of them. McDaniel and Applebaum have to decide who can be molded. Austin Jackson, Solomon Kindley, Robert Hunt, Liam Eikenberg, Michael Dieter, and a few others are still really young and could do well with better coaching but at the same time, they may discover these guys are not it and if that is the case, they will need to replace them. Can they get a feel for this group before the draft? Before free agency? They need to.